We're here today to talk about background radiation and to take a measurement for ourselves. First, let's look at the equipment that we're going to use to make this measurement. In front of us, we have a Geiger counter set up. I'm going to start by turning it on. And we have it in the continuous mode. And you can see that right off the bat, we start to get some readings. And that is despite the fact that there is no source of radioactive material directly near the Geiger counter. It immediately starts to recognize uh, some radioactive decay processes going on. Uh, that is because that there is natural radioactive background decay processes going on at all times. Um, the detector has a sensor at the very end here, and we have a source material right here, which as I begin to bring it closer, you can see the counts go up very quickly. Uh, that's because there is a intensity distance relationship that the closer the source of radiation gets, uh, the higher the intensity gets. So as we go forward to measure the intensity of background radiation, we're going to want to make sure that we're using the same setup that we'll be using later that keeps the source material at a constant distance. Uh, so we're going to make sure we're in the same orientation to take background readings that we are when we're taking actual readings of radioactive materials. So I'm going to uh, switch it from continuous to a rate mode and hit the reset button. Now in the rate mode, the Geiger counter will count internally for 60 seconds. And then on the display, it will start displaying the total amount of counts it got during the previous minute and then leave that count on the display for one minute and then leave it there while we get an internal count going on for the next minute. So you would have the ability uh, to get that reading written down during the next minute. So you don't have to worry about getting it written down really quickly. You have an entire minute to get the reading written down. So while we have uh, 10 minutes to collect 10 readings, uh, we're going to talk about sources of background radiation. Uh, these readings, you'll find there's a significant amount of variability. Our first reading we have is 63. Right? So background radiation comes from a variety of different sources. Uh, the first one is cosmic radiation. Uh, which is high energy particles, x-rays, gamma rays, uh, coming from the outer atmosphere. Uh, these will interact with the outer atmosphere and then uh, get absorbed to some extent. So the higher you live, say in Denver, you're going to get exposed to more cosmic rays than you would if you lived at ground level. Also, if you do lots of airplane travel, you're going to get more exposure as well. Another source of cosmic radiation is from elements uh, that are in the Earth. Uh, the most common ones that cause exposure are uranium, radium, and thorium, and also potassium-40. These natural decay processes cause about 5% of the uh, background radiation. So there's our second reading at 60 counts during the last minute. Okay. Now, over time, the uranium and the thorium uh, decay. And one of the major decay uh, products is radon. And radon is a gas. And it permeates up out of the soil. 
and can get trapped inside of homes. And so indoor exposure to radon gas is actually probably the biggest source of exposure that people have to background radiation. There's our third reading at 57. And so that amounts to almost, on average, about 50% of our exposure to uh, background radiation. Now, radiation background varies tremendously from location to location, depending on the types of soils that we're around. Uh, we also get exposure from actually our own bodies. Uh, the calcium 40 exists uh, within our own bodies. So these are just a few of the uh, sources of background radiation. that you can come up with. There are a few others, but those are the primary ones. Okay, there's our fourth reading at 93. And let's wait for a fourth background reading. Excuse me, fifth. So once we have all of our background readings, we would want to take an average because as we measure any additional source material, the readings that we get from that source won't be just the readings from the source. They will be from the source plus the background. So we would want to have the average background reading to be able to subtract from all of our other readings. So there's 26 for our fifth one. All right, so in the interest of time, here are five additional background readings. So you'd want at least a total of 10 to get a good average background reading. So you can go ahead and write those down so that you've got 10 total readings for your background.